was a global technical account manager. I am now actually a solutions architect at Electric Bow. So, kind of <laughs> part of what I wanted to tell you about, which hopefully is kind of, there we go, is the kind of the evolution of database deployments. First of all, so. All right, so we started out with manually deploying stuff to production. Basically what I mean by that is we'd take SQL scripts and we'd you know, put them on production and run them manually and do all of that. And kind of after that, I kind of see like the manual DB step. And then that kind of means like, you know, we'd create a database and we'd have another database. We wouldn't necessarily run SQL scripts, but you'd still would be manually doing it in production. So then, <laughs> all right. So then after that, I kind of see we started doing kind of automatically, trying to automatically run database deployments and stuff, but you know, still lots of you know, handwritten ways of doing that and all of that. And then I kind of call it you know, the auto database plus plus, where you know, okay, now we're not gonna manually do a script, I'm gonna use you know, SQL Server or something to do that, but it still is kind of a one-shot one solution. So what I kind of you know, wanna say is we should go to where we deploy databases anywhere. So, where the databases should automatically be able to be deployed instead of us having to spend a lot of time where we're using a solution that works for one product or anything because most of the time what I've seen and like Avon was saying you have lots of different you know you've got your dev and everything I rarely see people using Oracle and dev because they don't want to pay the license fees so more I see people trying to automatically now use the same method to deploy everywhere So next thing is, why is the database important? You know, what, what makes it important? To me, I mean, one of the biggest things is it contains all of your logic and your critical business data. I mean, if your database crashes and you lose that, you lose everything. I see it as the brains of the application. You know, it's like, you know, while the UI may be like, you know, the flashy, this looks pretty, this is my lovely demo and all of that, the database is the brains behind it. And I, because of that, I kind of see most people are scared to make the database changes. They're, you know, the second you say continuous deployment for a database, that's the first thing I get shot down with it. You can't do that because it has all my data. What if I lose it? So why, why is it complicated, though? Part of it is it usually has more than one application that points to the same database. You know, you don't really have the value of having an application specific database for every single application. Usually all of them are using the same one. Usually there's multiple databases on the same server. I rarely see people using the same, you know, only one database on one server. And like I said before, it's your most critical data. If you lose it, you lose everything. And schema changes. I don't think I need to say more than that. <laughs> so now I wanted to go into the things that you should should consider as you're doing database deployments. So some of the things that I always see is, first of all, testing. What applications do deploy stuff? What should you do for your testing? You know, where Do you test before? Do you test during the database upgrade? Do you test afterwards? Do you all three? And what do you do if your testing breaks? Do you automatically roll the database back? I'll get a little bit more into that, but how do you do that? You know, do you do manual intervention? Who decides what you do if it breaks? <laughs> so talking about rollbacks is, at what point did the database fail? You have to consider, what am I gonna do if I corrupt a table? What am I gonna do if it's partially updated and it breaks in the middle of the deployment? Was the system running when you were updating? So did you have changes since you first started and now? What do you do for that? So a lot of what I want to say is automation is really key to making sure you can make this work. But part of what you have to consider is who's going to own the automation? Does the database team own it? Does the release manager own it? Who owns it? And how does the automation determine if something was successful or it failed? You know, does it automatically decide? Usually it's the person writing that. How does that work? And what tools should you use? And one thing I want to kind of a plug for my company is consider tools that have automated rollback and rolling deployments because they become key and critical. So part of the rest of it is how do developers merge code? You kind of have to consider that when you're actually doing databases. So treat the database like an actual application rather than a separate thing. And how do you do stuff when you distribute it across the world? 
So I wanted to go into some of the methods that you can use for database deployments. One of the methods is the tried and true SQL scripts. And it has some advantages to use that. It, it's rather fast. You know, you're running your SQL script, it's there. And you're just running it, and there's minimal or no downtime when it works. And that's where I've seen, especially when you're manually writing a SQL script, there's always issues. So what are the disadvantages? It requires developers to never make a mistake, which I'm sure no one does. And it requires a lot of testing, and it's really hard to test it. How do you test if you're going to roll back? How do you test that? And if there's multiple developers working on the same database, how do they merge all of their SQL code together? Or do they merge it together? So who should use SQL scripts? For very small databases, it probably works really well. And if it's a very small development team, you know, if there's only one or two people developing, a SQL script probably works really well. Or if it's just a very simple change, you know, if it's like updating one column, a SQL script could work well. And one other thing I have to say is there's a lot of legacy databases people work with, and SQL scripts are your only option then. So the second method that I wanted to kind of discuss is backing up at deploy. And what do I mean by this? So basically, what I mean by backing up at deploy is you shut down your server, you take an entire backup, you deploy, you bring it back up. That will guarantee 100% uptime. So the advantage is, like I said, it guarantees you 100% you'll go back to the previous state. And technically speaking, it's the safest way. But there's some disadvantages. Obviously, every application that depends on the database is down the entire time. And it provides a lot slower deployments, especially if you have a, little, a really large database. Your deployments are going to be really slow. But I do see some people that can use it. If your application can withstand being down for a little bit, like I said, it's the safest way you can do it. And for a very small database that backs up in like 30 seconds, there's no reason why you shouldn't then. And if your applications don't share databases, so you're using a single one for all of them. So another thing that Microsoft has is a DAC pack. And I don't know if you guys have heard of them before, but it's basically Microsoft trying to solve this solution. So it'll have a profile and a DAC pack, and it'll tell you what changes you made, and it'll try to automatically do that deployment. And so it looks what's currently on the database and then compares that, and the DAC pack will apply the changes. So the advantages to using the DAC pack, first of all, it creates easier rollbacks because the DAC pack is supposed to handle it. And you can deploy the previous one if you need to roll back, which my other plug for Electric Flow is you can do that automatically with our solution. And you can use Visual Studio for actually handling your changes. But some of the disadvantages of this is they have what's called a profile. And if your profile is not very well written, you can actually lose data with a DAC pack. And it's the Microsoft-only solution. So if you use Oracle, unfortunately, you are stuck. And it's relatively new, so they're still working some kinks out. So who do I think should use it? If you're a Microsoft-only shop, definitely look into it. And if you can use the SQL Server version that supports it, because it's only on the later versions. And then I wanted to say there's some other database deployment tools that you guys should look at. I'm not going to plug any one of them, but there's several of them out there. So what are some of the strategies that you can use for this? The first one is kind of you can do the just do it. Deploy everything at once. Deploy to all the machines. You just run it. And the just do it strategy, I guess it could provide super fast deployments. And I guess on success, you know, things are already out there. Disadvantages are you break everything. And you don't have a lot of time to test. So I would actually not recommend this strategy, but it is a strategy there. The other one is kind of doing a partial deployment. So some people call it canary. There's lots of different terms for it. Basically for that, you end up you have your three nodes of your database cluster, and you have your three nodes of your application cluster, and you take one of them and deploy to that one and test. And then you take the application out, you deploy to that and test. And then once you've determined that it works, you deploy the rest of your database and the rest of your application. So the advantages of this is it allows you to test on a subset of users, 
And on failure, you don't bring everything down. And you can get a sneak peek to like some users. So lots of companies use this when they want to like deploy and give a couple of users give a couple of users the code, but not everyone. But there's definitely some disadvantages to it. Is it's a bit complex to maintain and requires more infrastructure, and often you'll have to make application changes too. So there's also a rolling deployment. So basically, by the rolling deployment, you have your three nodes. You deploy to one of them, but you don't take it out of there. You deploy to the one application. It's very similar to the other one. And then you test it. Once you've tested, then you deploy to the others. And then you've got it on everywhere. So I think this is one of the smartest ways, and this is the way I would recommend people doing it if you can, because you don't have to have an entire cloned infrastructure. And if something breaks, you just remove that machine from your load balancer, and you go on. Some of the disadvantages, though, is version mismatch you can get, and that can cause lots of issues sometimes. And you have to have a clustered app environment, which I would say you should have a clustered environment anyway, so if you don't, do it. And kind of the last one I wanted to say is the, I call it the additive strategy, where instead of modifying or changing any columns, you add a new column when you need something, and then you copy that code to that new column, and then once you've decided that works, then you remove the old one. And what this kind of allows you to do is it allows you to not have to, not have to, when you're deploying to everything, you're only deploying to, you're only deploying new code, so you don't have to worry about breaking because you updated a column wrong. So like I said, you never mess with existing columns, and there's less room for errors. Disadvantages is your databases can get rather large, but if you are good at cleaning it up, then it's okay. So a couple of takeaways I wanted you guys to kind of have were, first of all, I always say don't treat the database as a stepchild. Think about it from the very beginning. Think about it when you're doing your continuous deployments. And as I kind of try to say, not one solution doesn't work for everyone, so think about all the different solutions and choose the best one for you. So I actually am way under time, but, <laughs> but the other thing I want to say is talk to me. If you have any ideas, I'm certainly happy to hear them. And that's it. <laughs>